Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. In this video I will share with you my thoughts about SV Boini 80mm SV550, a port telescope that I have used for the last couple of months. In particular I want to cover all the good and bad aspects of this telescope that I have found while using it. Before we begin I want to remind you that I posted my first video with this telescope earlier in June and in that video I showed the whole process of setting this telescope up for deep sky astrophotography. If you haven't seen this video or if you're interested in watching this video, the link should appear in the corner over there. In the video you're watching now, I'll go over different aspects of the telescope tube. Afterwards, we'll check out some images that I captured using it. In particular, are there any chromatic aberrations around the bright stars? We'll check it out. Then I'll share a summary about this telescope and finish the video with a 20 hours exposure time image I captured using it. Now, let's jump into this video review. I will start right away with my overall great experience I've had with this 80mm APO. Honestly, I kind of had high expectations from this telescope already after using its bigger 122mm version and pretty much my expectations were met. Let's look at the telescope itself and I'll cover different aspects of it. Let's start from like front part and all the way to the end. Uh, the front part, dew shield. The dew shield is retractable and personally once I set up this telescope I never slid the shield back to its original position since I had to divide these uh, telescope rings in order to install this mounting plate and all the accessories on top. Kind of having uh, this uh, retractable shield is good for traveling but you'll likely leave it in the same position if you set up your telescope like the way as it is. So what about telescope rings? Uh, telescope rings they made pretty well uh, everything looks solid, like all these uh, knobs, uh, there are no shifting, nothing. What I appreciate with these rings is that the presence of uh, this M6 thread size holes on the top of uh, the telescope rings, which basically allows you to connect like this plate from Lowe's, I got it for a few dollars. And uh, when you place this plate on top with the M6 screws, you just uh, mount the plate and then you can uh, mount all the accessories on top. I covered this part in my previous video. Uh, pretty convenient if you like cable management or if you like organized stuff. I would appreciate it even more if there were threads on the sides of the telescope rings like on the SV Boney 122mm telescope. But that is just my personal like preference as I would probably mount another plate on the side or something. Uh, even without it, pretty much having this uh, M6 threads is enough to mount a plate and putting all the accessories that you need on the top of the telescope. The dovetail that came with the telescope is a bit short in my opinion. As I mentioned in my previous video, I had to replace uh, this original dovetail uh, with the longer dovetail from a different telescope to get a bit more room in order to balance the telescope better. So the focuser here is rock and pinion focuser and uh, it actually performs good. So the focuser is pretty strong if I try to shift it. There is no like additional shifting or wobbling uh, of uh, the focuser stroke, which is good. I try to focus the telescope manually at the beginning using a button of mask. Once I focus the telescope and uh, fixed this knob so that the focuser is not going to move, the focuser stays pretty strong uh, along the imaging session and it's good. If you decide to buy this telescope, please note that the packaging includes only the telescope itself. You will not find any adapters, diagonals or finder scopes. You can purchase any additional accessories separately if it's required and I personally think that this is the right move from SV Boni. If you're getting this telescope, say, for astrophotography, you most likely do not need a finder scope that would add to the price. Instead, you will need a guide scope so you can add, uh, as I said, all the additional accessories and buy them separately. Unless, of course, you're just upgrading the telescope itself and uh, you already have everything you need to run your deep sky imaging sessions. However, there are still two pieces of equipment that I would consider getting uh, with this 80mm APO. So the first one is a field flattener and I want to take it off first. So the field flattener is really important if you want to get flat images, which basically means that you're gonna get sharp stars around the whole area of the camera field of view and yeah that's the one that you really want to get unless you're getting a 0.x focal reducer that i will discuss a bit later in this video now the second accessory is optional and maybe you only want to get one if you're getting this field flattener and i'm talking about a field rotator so you thread it in directly to the focuser and then you install the flattener. By installing this thing, you can adjust the rotation of your camera field of view if needed. And what's nice about this rotator is that 
uh, there is a scale mark across the whole rotator. The only reason I told you that you might want to get this rotator if you're getting feel flattener is just because, say, you're using a 0.x focal reducer from SV Boini that uh, is not threaded directly to the focuser, but if you just install it into the 2 inch diameter adapter, then you can kind of rotate your camera within this 2 inch adapter and uh, there are no threads uh, with a 0.x focal reducer but if you use this field flattener or any like uh, reducer say that you thread in then rotator is something that is i'd say required uh, if you want to be flexible in terms of adjusting the rotation of your camera field of view unless you want to do something that a band from the narrowband channel would do and he rotates the whole tube within the rings now you can do that but if you limit it with your movements of the telescope within the rings then get, just get the rotator guys what about the reducer well sv Boni does not offer a dedicated reducer for this model but i have tried it with a 0.x focal reducer made for the 80 millimeter sv503 duplet telescope and it worked perfectly with uh, this telescope and an aps-c size camera which also means that it should work well with smaller size sensors if you want to capture at a faster f ratio so that will be an option that you can consider However, please note that I haven't tested this 0.x focal reducer with a full frame camera, just because I don't have one. So I don't know how the stars would look like if you're using uh, this telescope 0.x focal reducer and a full frame camera. At the end of the tube, you'll find a guider or a finder scope shoe. And uh, with this telescope, you can actually mount it either on the right or on the left side. Or if you want, you can buy an additional finder shoe and install both of them. So for example, you can, like if you use ASI Air, on one of them you can install ASI Air and on the other one you can install your guide camera. So these were all my thoughts about the tube itself and now let's take a look at the images that I captured using it. Mostly I'll be showing just single exposures and I want to start with this picture of a bright star called Vega. This is just 3 minute exposure sub, no calibration frames were applied, uh, just single exposure. And here's the list of the equipment I used. So basically we got 80mm APO telescope, uh, SV Boini SV209 1x flattener that was dedicated specifically for this telescope. Then I used a color ZWO2600 MC Pro camera, and for this particular image, no filters were used. So if we take a closer look, we can say that basically, like all the bright stars uh, within the field of view, they all look pretty good. There are no like chromatic aberrations, nothing around them. Uh, however, there are only two things that I want to pay attention to. When I was locating Vega exactly at the center of the camera field of view, I noticed that over here I have this either like a glare or reflection that I think is caused by Vega. And since there were no filters used, um, my guess that the tel that this reflection is produced by the telescope itself. And I also have a picture of the same star that I located at the different area of the field of view. And let's check out this image. So as you can see, Vega is located at the top left corner. And if we zoom it into the same area where I have this reflection on this image, which is in between the stars, like a bit upper from this bright star, right here, there are no ref reflections or glares. So basically it tells me that most likely this ref reflection is produced by the telescope, but it only applies to really bright star like Vega and uh, guys I don't think there are many targets where we have uh, these bright stars in the frame and now let's take a look at corners of the same image where Vega was located at the center of the field of view so the left part I uh, will let you guys decide whether these corners look good or no this is the top left corner left part bottom left corner bottom right corner where we can see that the stars they more like elongated but overall i think that's not bad for the telescope with that price and uh, if by any chance you have blur exterminator you can just apply correction for these stars and uh, in a couple of seconds you'll see how the stars they just corrected and uh, looked much better than they did before so for example if we take a look at the top right corner this is how stars look like 
after correction and that's how they looked like before correction and same for the left bottom corner before and after so yeah if by any chance you have blue rocks terminator you can correct uh, your stars using it but even without it uh, overall this image looks pretty good all right so before proceeding to the next image i want to point out that all these images that i have shown and i will show they will be available for you guys to check them out i think on a google drive the link to these pictures will be in the description of the video so if you want to check out those images closer just find the link in the description download images and check them out guys now let's take a look at this image of a nebula called ic1318 that i captured using a dual narrowband filter so as you can see um that's how basically the image looks like if you capture it with a dual narrowband filter this star called sutter uh, this one has a halo around it and this halo is produced by the filter itself so basically what i want to show you there is uh, the field of view that you can get using aps-c size camera and a flattener so this is the field of view that you can get if you use 0.x focal reducer and this particular one is sv boini sv193 i think that's how it's called and uh, that was dedicated for a duplet 80 millimeter telescope but as you can see you can work uh, with this reducer and uh, this APA telescope that's how stars look like at the corners that's the bottom right corner bottom left corner yeah, as you can see like stars here they slightly elongated they have like a comet shape but once again with blue rock terminator you can easily correct it and um, yep that's what you can get if you use your 1x fog reducer the thing is those images were captured with a dual narrow band filter but if you take a picture without a filter so here is the picture of the same area I see 1318 but I didn't use dual narrow band filter I used a UV IR card filter and a 0.x focal reducer from a different SV Boni telescope so the thing is if you use 0.x focal reducer and capture in broadband you can see these chromatic operations around uh, brighter stars that we have in the camera field of view and the, the, those chromatic operations they are produced by the reducer not by the telescope itself so if you want to capture more cleaner images it's better to use flattener of course that was dedicated for uh, this telescope and even if you ask us Fibonacci about using this 0.x focal reducer with 80 millimeter APO they're gonna tell you that no this reducer was dedicated for SV503 telescope with SV550 we offer just flattener and basically that's all you can get guys but the thing is if you don't want to use SV Boini's 0.x focal reducer but still want to use like uh, any focal reducer that is dedicated for this 80 millimeter telescope uh, that's one of the examples that I found on the internet the price of this particular reducer is more than SV Boini's version but this reducer is for f6 refractors telescopes which means that basically it should work good and that's one of the examples i personally haven't tested this one but if you want to try it go ahead or if there are any users of this reducer uh, let me and let everybody know in the comment section below if it's any good and like what you think about it but yep as another option that you can consider is this astrotech 0.x focal reducer and I think that's all I wanted to show you guys for this part. And once again, those images will be available on the Google Drive. And the link to those images you can find in the description to the video. Who do I think this telescope is for? Well, if you're looking for a budget APO with an 80mm aperture, this telescope is a good option to get. You will not have any problems uh, with setting this telescope up for deep sky photography. Just keep in mind that you'll possibly need to get a bigger dovetail if a center of mass on your rig is shifted towards the focuser itself. For example, my APS-C size camera with the filter wheel, it adds a weight on this part of the telescope. So I needed a longer dovetail in order to balance the telescope properly. But if you're using something smaller, possibly you'll be fine with the shorter dovetail. Also keep in mind that you can use this telescope with a 0.x focal reducer from the SV503 telescope, which means you get an APO with an f4.8 focal ratio. 
for a relatively good price. So as you can see, this SV550 80mm APO is a good performer. And if it's that good, why would I get it for myself? Although I really want to buy this one, I already have a 122mm APO of the same model. The rest of my mounts, they're taken with different telescopes, so I kind of don't have a mount that I can uh, use the telescope with. However, if I ever get a chance to work with this telescope again, I want to test it out with a Starizona 0.65x focal reducer and see how it will perform together. All right, guys, so that's all I got about this telescope. I want to thank SV Bonnie for letting me using this one, and I really hope that the videos I've posted about uh, 80mm APO from SV Bonnie were helpful to you, and you got some ideas about the telescope itself, about the images you, you can get, and overall experience that uh, you can get when using it. In the end, I have a final picture of the IC1318 Nebula in Cygnus that I captured from Portal 6 Skies in Venusburg. Uh, thank you guys so much for watching this video until the very end. Please hit the like button and also consider subscribing to my channel if you haven't already. And if you just did, welcome to the channel. I will see you in my future videos, guys. And until next time, clear skies.